So in my years of uh, in my years of research on this subject and scouring the web, I have yet to find a single, not one, research paper, book, or article written on starvation and living without rule of law uh, after a grid down scenario, or just in general. There has never been a psychological study or an experiment conducted with the proper parameters <coughs> to directly extrapolate um, relevant information and apply it to how the American people will respond to the chaos and starvation brought on by a grid down event. In truth, it would be virtually impossible to conduct such an experiment today for multiple reasons. The big one is that all, all the psychological and sociological research uh, that psychologists do, it's purely situational and it's hard to recreate a true starvation and desperation scenario in a lab setting. What do I mean by that? Well, most modern day American studies of human despair and suffering, in the rare occasions it's even, it's even studied, use data points gained from a population pool, Americans, uh, uh, of everyday Americans over the last 100 years, and we're the wealthiest, most entitled country in the world. It's hard to find people that could fit into that kind of thought process. What happens when against someone's will, you instantly take every single life-sustaining uh, necessity away from them? What happens when the average person hasn't eaten a single substantial meal an entire week, a month? What happens when you combine that by taking away every single creature comfort as well? What if you place them in a hostile environment where they could be potentially killed at any given point at any day? Um, if you place them in a test environment with no parameters, no rules, and no oversight, how do you, how do you put people in such a scenario without getting sued into the next millennium, right? Uh, how do you even study that from a psychological standpoint? You can't duplicate that environment uh, in today's modern culture. You just can't. So all we can do is extrapolate as much information from the, uh, from the prior studies and look to historical events behind human desperation, starvation, and living without rule of law. So let's discuss the three factors. The first one we're going to discuss is human desperation. Human desperation, okay? It's a very hard thing to explain or study because it encompasses such a wide range of issues varying, uh, of, of different varying degrees. In America, we live our lives in a sort of protected bubble. Our world makes sense. There is a general sense of right and wrong. Uh, on the macro level, at least, we have drawn lines in the sand as to what type of behavior we will or will not take, take, uh, participate in. You can go about your daily life and it typically progresses as you planned it, right? Everyone develops life patterns and daily habits in the way we live our lives, even if they don't realize it. Our human interactions with others are typically normal, safe, and sane. Though, you know, that's getting harder by the day. There's a pattern of cause and effect in our lives. We live in a generally safe environment, right? Most believe we will grow old with our loved ones and live to a ripe old age. If we are hurt, we can go and buy food. If we wanna know the secrets of the universe, uh, we can take that little handheld device in your hand and say, okay, Google, uh, and the secrets of the universe appear in front of you in milliseconds, right? If we want to conversate with a loved one on the other side of the world, we can dial them on our cell phone. Within minutes, we are communicating with them in real time or video conferencing. Life is normal. Things make sense. They've always been this way. Let's jump forward in time. It's now a month to do a grid down total collapse scenario. None of the previous statements that I just said are true anymore. In the new world that you find yourself in, nothing makes sense. You can't trust anyone. Nobody speaks to one another anymore, and entering into a simple conversation with a stranger could get you robbed or killed. A few days ago, you watched your soft-spoken, friendly neighbor kill a traveler after fighting with them over a can of baked beans that the traveler had in their pack. The bloated victim is still laying in the middle of the street with his head half caved in. His empty eyes are staring at you through your front window. They seem to be staring directly into you. Why? didn't you help me? There was a small child traveling with the man who stayed with the body for a while, but you don't know where the child has gone now. You try not to consider the possibilities. You can't even feed your own children, let alone a stranger's child. You wonder yourself when you became so cold and so callous. However, you still don't respond any differently because you've learned the hard way to mind your own business and ignore the atrocities happening around you. There is no law enforcement. There is no military to call or come to your aid. And in truth, there don't seem to be any rules or laws to follow. You have become numb to death and you ignore the person's bloated body 
along the other bodies strewn about your neighborhood. The smell of the new world is unbearable. Rotten food, dead bodies, trash, feces, it all combines to a horrific stench that you can never escape from indoors or out. Your spouse was out of town on business when the lights first went out. They could be anywhere. Are they still alive? You have done things to acquire food for your children that you wouldn't have fathomed you were capable of before the electricity went out. Your home is nearly inhabitable now because raw sewage has backed up into it and you don't know how to block it off at the street. You're, you tried to stuff rags down into the drains and into the toilet, but the rags keep popping out by the back pressure of feces and raw sewage gurgling out of your drains. The grocery stores were looted weeks ago and you've long ago eaten all the food in your kitchen. For the last week, you've been reduced to scavenging and eating rotten food from refrigerators in some of the abandoned houses around you. The last meal you ate contained more maggots than it contained food. You closed your eyes and you held your nose as you swallowed. You are ashamed because in a rush, you gobbled down half of the rotten sandwich you found and you didn't give it all to your children. You were just so unbelievably hungry. It took every last vestige of willpower to stop eating the rotten sandwich once you started. But you knew you had to save some for your child. You've been drinking water from a barrel in the backyard you've rigged your downspouts into. You can't risk boiling the water because it'll bring attention to you uh, with the fire. So you've just been drinking the water as it is. Now everyone in the house has diarrhea. Everyone is dehydrated and the rain barrel is almost empty. It hasn't rained in days. Your four-year-old child cut her leg last week and it's now badly infected and she has a fever. The hospitals are abandoned. There is no one to help. You are a failure. You can't provide food for your family because there is no food anywhere. You look once more at the newest dead body in the street. It's obviously too late and too dangerous to travel now. Where would you go anyway? One of your neighbors left a week ago and told you they'd heard word that Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas had power somehow. Regardless of the ambush da danger along the route, your neighbors were going to make a foolish attempt to walk halfway across the country. You look down at your daughter's pale skin, gaunt face, and you wonder how long she'll live. She'd never make that journey. You still don't understand why electricity hasn't come back on. What is taking them so long to fix it? When will this end? There's no TV, there's no internet, there's no radio transmissions giving hope or offering suggestions. You've heard a dozen different rumors, but no one seems to really know exactly what is going on. Absolutely nothing about your current existence resembles anything from your previous way of life. You are overwhelmed. What will you do? What can you do? That is human desperation. You can't quantify it. You can't explain it. You can't study it. And it will be different for every person who lives through a grid down scenario. Human desperation will just exist. It can be caused by something as simple as constantly worrying about your loved one who you can't find, get to, who's on the other side of the country. Or maybe something larger, like you were forced to kill somebody in self-defense and haven't been able to sleep for an entire week now. It can manifest itself in a variety of emotions like sadness, depression, rage. Every person inflicted with depression and desperation will have difficulties making logical and rational decisions. Remember, people who are desperate are also completely incapable of being relied upon or trusted. They are so far outside of their comfort zone, you can't predict how they will act or react to any given situation. Human desperation is an enigma. It is also the new normal. Should have got a smaller water bottle. I feel like I'm drinking from a jug up here. All right, point number two, starvation. 